I watched a video earlier showing uh, how a reloader was changing over his progressive press uh, from one cartridge setting to another. Um, thought it might be an interesting uh, example here we could do with the Hornady lock and load AP press um, to show how it works. Because it works a little bit differently on different brands of presses. One of the reasons I chose this is because caliber changeovers are um, relatively cheap, relatively quick and easy. So uh, we'll get into that. So what I'm doing is I'm changing my press over from 38 Special to 4440. And that requires a couple of things to be changed, including the case specific shell plate has to come off. So we we'll take the 44 Special shell plate off. It just comes off with one bolt. Right. There's a case retention spring set that aside and we've got a another shell plate that we'll put on in a minute but with the uh, shell plate off it's a little bit easier to see what we're doing uh, we have to change the primer size from small to large so the primer shuttle has to come out also um, the little plunger that seats the primer is also a different size so just use a wrench to loosen that Because the primer is a different diameter, the primer feed tube uh, has to be changed. So we've pulled that out. Placement parts I keep organized. So here is the large primer feed tube, simple to change out. Also in this little bag, I've got the large size shuttle and the cedar just like to pull the other one out it's threaded and raising the uh, subplate raising the ram here helps you get access to that it just screws in just snug it up with the wrench The shuttle, just into the slot, and then you have to attach the spring. So that's in. And now we can put the appropriate size shell plate in. This little keyway on there that you match up with the slot and the shell plate. Put the bolt back in. goes around the edge of the shell plate and you cycle it a few times to get the spring to drop into a little groove on the subplate. So that's done. All right, now we're going to change out the dies. And the neat thing about the Hornady is the lock and load, where it gets its name, these bushings attached to each die. Um, you lock the die into the bushing so it saves your settings and they just come out with a simple the one eighth twist and they come out so get each of the guys out of there and move that light out of the way all right so the is a case activated uh, powder measure and it also fits into a lower the die body you can see probably here how it installs just drop, drop it in just give it a eighth of a turn to lock it in now um, you get one of these die bodies with the press with the powder measure and you can reset it every time you change cartridges but the more efficient way to do it is to uh, unmount the powder measure from the die body and we can just set that aside for a sec and I've got each of my uh, powder measure die bodies for each cartridge that I load because again they're set up to the cartridge length there's an insert 
that I will take out and I will replace that with the 4440 die body. Insert goes back in. Let's get the other dies in. All right, this is the 4440 sizing die. We'll tight back here with that shield in the way. There's the expansion die. Get that out of the way. I think the, the light back in. Put the sizer die back in, or rather the uh, pattern measure. Um, put the insert in so we can simply drop the pattern measure back into place. This attachment back in. Reinstall the spring. Make sure those fittings are still screwed in right. Here's a neat thing another the lock and load feature that a lot of people know about. The metering stem for the powder measure mounts with a little push button and you can pull it out. So, as you can see, um, this is a simple um, stem that I have um, marked. I leave it locked in it'll throw 3.2 grains of red dye. That's sort of my pet load for 38 Special Cowboy Smokeless. And when I want to load, work up a load, I've got this micrometer adjustable seeding stem that goes into its place. You can also drop, you know, another pre-measured uh, stem in there if you wanted to. Just have to align this a little there. So that's in, all right. So then here's my seat crimp die, and I have another um, RCBS lockout die. Uh, this one is my cowboy lockout die that I leave set for that same 3.2 of red die. I never change that. Another one I will adjust when I work up the load that I'm going to do on this one. I will adjust it to the, uh, to the proper size. So now um, I'm completely changed over. And I talked through all of it. If you're not talking and explaining what you're doing, it goes actually uh, very quickly. And um, so those lock and load bushings cost, I don't know, four or five dollars a piece. Um, you don't have to buy a tool head just to buy a bushing for each of your dies. Um, this um, die body, which saves you a lot of time, they're about twenty-five dollars a piece uh, to change over. And everything else, you know, you just uh, adjust. So that's what it takes to switch over. The Hornady L1L AP press, in case you were wondering. Now I'm ready to um, load some uh, primers into the tube, uh, put some powder in the hopper. I'm going to work up a new smokeless load uh, for 4440 next. So, see you on the range.